and the bottom of the box intersect? Well, they intersect here. The left and the bottom intersect right there. Now, do they intersect as a segment or as a line? It's kind of confusing because the box, obviously, the only place the box intersects is right here on this line segment. But it doesn't say where do the sides of the box intersect. It said where do the planes intersect. And see, this plane right here, that's the left side of the box, goes on forever. And the plane that's the bottom of the box goes on, it stretches out forever. The box doesn't, but the plane does. Which means that this segment right here, this line where they intersect, intersect goes on forever. And line segments don't go on forever, but lines do. So where do they intersect? They intersect at this line right here, at CG or GC, either one. So be sure that you put the line symbol. If all you did was say GC and you didn't put the line symbol over it, it would be incorrect. And if you said GC and put a segment symbol over it, that would also be incorrect because planes don't intersect at a segment. They intersect where there's a line because planes go on forever and lines go on forever. All right, so that's the end of that one. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. Um, name the intersection of planes P and M. Okay, well, planes intersect at a line. So where do these two planes intersect? Well, right there. Right there at AB, the line AB, not segment AB. You got a picture that even though this plane has like these solid definite edges, it, it, we only drew the edges so that you could see it, right? We, we had to draw something in so that our eye could see it, but there really isn't an edge here. It goes on forever in that particular direction. And this one goes on forever which means that where these two planes intersect stretches out forever. So they intersect at a line, and that line is at AB. Remember, two capital letters together is a distance. If I want to say the line, I need the line symbol above it. Okay, name a point that's on both planes. Well, only where those planes intersect, right? So pick a point that's on the line of intersection. Name a point that's not on either one of the planes. Hmm, let's see. Obviously, all of these points right here are on this plane in some way. And all of the points here on M are on that plane. But look at this line that's showing it sticks up line K, or I could call it line GD. It sticks up out of plane M, and then you can see it hits plane M right there at G. The dotted line shows where I couldn't see, right? Like picture this plane as being solid, and you can't see it, and then you can see that line coming out from under the plane again. Well, this point right here is on that line, D. D is on that line, but it's not on plane M. And because of the way the picture is drawn, it's saying that it's also not on plane P. Now don't get confused and think, well, that plane extends out forever and maybe it hits it. No, the picture is telling you it's not on that. Okay, because maybe this plane just comes right out in front of it there. Okay, so name a point that's um, not on either one, D. And all I have to write is D. One capital letter means it's a point. Um, give another name for plane M. Well, three points define a plane. So pick three points that are on that plane and write them together. Um, is plane M larger than plane P? Well, if you just look at the picture, it's kind of hard to tell, right? Like, boy, is this parallelogram bigger than this one? If that's what you're doing, then you're not really understanding what a plane is because Remember I said that we had to draw those lines, but they're not really there, the edges of the planes. They, it extends out forever. 
plane M goes on and on and on and on forever in every direction, and so does plane P. They're both infinitely large. So could one be bigger than the other if they're infinitely large? No, not possible. And then you need to explain why. So be sure and explain why. And hopefully what I just said made sense. Use complete sentences. All right. Um, name the intersection of line K and M. We talked about that already. So hopefully you can do that. By the way, um, planes and lines intersect at a point. Planes and lines intersect at a point. And um, how about this one? Is line K, so this line right here, is it longer than this line segment? See, that's a line segment symbol. It doesn't mean line AB. There is a line AB here that goes right through A and B and goes on forever. But is a line longer than a line segment? Yes. Yes, it is, because a line segment has a defined finite length. It has a beginning, it begins at A, and it ends at B. Or you could look at the reverse, it begins at B and ends at A. But a line has an infinite number of points. Okay. Um, and that is the end of that one. And uh, now we're on to question number three, which I think this starts the back side of your paper there. Um, and this is, these problems are going to use the segment addition postulate. And hopefully you have your theorem page, your theorem paper, and I believe this is the first theorem that we will write on there. If you don't have it, if you are absent for some reason, then you can go to the website, go to geometry, um, instead of going to the homework videos, which is how you got here, go to the calendar, um, go to September, and then on the day of the assigned homework, which this is one of these days, you had this class, um, there's a theorem sheet here, and you can print that out, this uh, blank theorem sheet. And you can fill that theorem in um, on your theorem sheet so that you have that available for your test. So anything in these yellow boxes here, those are things you can have on your theorem sheet. And the segment addition postulate says, if Q, one capital letter means it's a point, so if point Q is between P and R, Okay, then PQ plus RQ equals PR. So here's the picture that goes with that. So if Q is between P and R, it means it's on the same line. Q has to be right on the same line. There's the picture. Then this piece of it, PQ, plus this piece of it, QR, has to equal the entire distance. Okay. P, R. That's, that makes sense, right? That's intuitive. So our directions say, given that B is between A and C, you know what, before I even go any farther, I always draw a picture immediately. Just draw the picture. All right, so B is between A and C. Now it doesn't say that B's dead set in the middle, so don't put it in the middle, because then it just makes your eye think it's supposed to be. B is between A and C. Okay, now I highlighted these two things. Find the value of X and the measure of BC. Be careful.